Good evening from San Ignacio Town. With the 9 o'clock news, I am Patrick Jones. In the headlines, Special Envoy for Women and Children delivers address on International Day for People with Disability. Home invasion reported in Burlboom Village and investigation of youth hostel fire a week ago continues. Stay tuned for details of these and other stories coming up after these messages. one-stop destination. What you will find is a first-class selection of solid, dependable, quality products from the names you can trust. We carry a full line of urea and Shortec tools and equipment to meet every need from light maintenance around the house to heavy-duty fieldwork. Our tire workshop features the full array of Pirelli, Nexon, and Nankang tires for every vehicle and any terrain. Our trained technicians' number one priority is to ensure you and your family's safety and security on the road. It's all here at the Belize Tire Depot. From reliable equipment, world-class time-tested tires, to sturdy, durable tools. Merchandise that's built to last with quality guaranteed. Here now is the news in details. The Special Envoy for Women and Children, Kim Simplis Barrow, has delivered an address on the occasion of International Day of People with Disability. First observed on December 3rd, 1992, the aim of the day is to promote an understanding of disability issues and promote dignity, rights, and the well-being of persons with disabilities. The meaning of the word inclusion has evolved significantly since December 3rd was proclaimed by the United Nations General Assembly as International Day of Persons with Disabilities in 1992. Today, true inclusion means we must embrace 
the fact that no matter our differences, we are all members of the human family. We all have the right to participate fully and equally in our society. It is unfortunate that many persons with disabilities still don't get to enjoy their fundamental rights. They are excluded not only by common physical barriers, but also attitudinal barriers, communication barriers, economical barriers. This is why the observance of this day is especially important. It promotes an understanding of disability issues and mobilizes support for the dignity, rights and well-being of persons with disabilities. It is an opportunity to increase awareness globally on the benefits that can be derived from integrating persons with disabilities into every aspect of political, social, economic and cultural life. The theme for this year's observance, Inclusion Matters, Access and Empowerment for People of All Abilities, is a reminder of our responsibility as a society to demolish the barriers that enable exclusion. In Belize, we have seen slow but notable progress in services and accessibility. As a Global Ambassador for Special Olympics, I ask that we renew our commitment to ensuring that persons with disabilities enjoy the same standards of equality, rights and dignity as everyone else. 1981 was proclaimed as the International Year of Disabled Persons by the United Nations General Assembly. The theme of the year was full participation and equality. After this, they proclaimed 1983 until 1992 as the United Nations Decade of Disabled Persons. Nowadays, International Day of People with Disability seeks to increase awareness of gains to be derived from the integration of persons with disabilities in every aspect of political, social, economic, and cultural life. Meanwhile, Disabilities Week ended earlier today with a sports day for children with special needs, which was held at the Marion Jones Sport Complex in Belize City. Over a hundred children with varying degrees of disabilities took part in various disciplines, including track and field. The theme for Disabilities Week was Inclusion Matters, Access and Empowerment for All People with Disabilities. Organizers of today's sport day emphasize the importance of having children with special needs involved because it gives them a feeling of belonging and tells them that they can do anything. As part of today's sports day, the children were also given medical and dental checkups. The international media is reporting that Belize is being asked to accept up to 4,000 Cuban migrants who are stuck in Costa Rica and Panama as they attempt to make their way to the United States of America. Prime Minister Dean Barrow today confirmed that a request from the President of Costa Rica has been made. According to a report from Reuters, officials in Costa Rica are in negotiations with their counterparts in Belize following Guatemala's decision to deny them access to its territory. The Foreign Minister of Costa Rica, Manuel Gonzalez, is quoted in the international report as saying that Belize should analyze the situation and take action. The same report says that the Costa Rican officials are expecting a response from Belize following Tuesday's cabinet meeting. Prime Minister Dean Barrow has told reporters in Belize that he has asked Costa Rica to make its request in writing. The Belize government is still awaiting that document. Reuters is reporting that should Belize allow the Cuban migrants entry, they would come via what is being called an air bridge and that the migrants may have to pay their own flights. TNC News understands that the proposal is for the Cubans, if granted access to Belize, to land at the Philip Goldson International Airport and then would travel via buses to the Belize-Mexico border, where they would continue on their journey north. Gonzalez uh, said Costa Rica, which is struggling to cut spending and raise additional revenues, would not be in a position to pay the airfare for the Cubans to come to Belize. 
Thousands of Cubans are backed up in Costa Rica and Panama in a frustrated bid to reach the United States. Costa Rica has been trying to broker a so-called humanitarian corridor through Central America after Nicaragua denied access to nearly 4,000 Cuban migrants last month, leaving them stranded near the Costa Rica-Nicaragua border. Police in Ladyville Village, Belize District, are investigating a home invasion at the residence of the Honorary Council of Lebanon in Belize, Sarkis Abonera. It happened late last night and preliminary reports are that a caretaker and his wife were terrorized for hours until about 3 o'clock this morning. According to police, a caretaker of the residence says that he and his wife were held up at gunpoint by eight individuals who had their faces covered. The home invaders reportedly tied up the caretaker and proceeded to search the residence. Stolen during the home invasion were two 9mm pistols, a 12-gauge shotgun, a rifle, an assortment of jewelry, and $13,000 in cash. Police say the culprits made good their escape in a car with consular license plates. That vehicle with diplomatic license plates was later found abandoned on St. Joseph Street in Belize City. Police investigations continue. You're watching the 9 o'clock news. We will have more of the day's stories for you right after these messages. go? Tired of missing your favorite games while they're actually being played? Watch your games and sporting events live with Central TV and Internet's incredible My TV. Simply log on to www.mitv.bz to get easy access to 25 channels no matter where you are. With Central TV and Internet's My TV, you're always in the game.
Welcome back to the 9 o'clock news. The House of Representatives met for the last time this year today in Belmopan. The meeting was short and one of the main features was the introduction and passage of a loan motion bill. Other activities during today's uh, sitting of the House of Representatives included maiden speeches by a couple of the newly elected members of the House of Representatives. Several of them have also been appointed to the various committees of the House of Representatives. We'll have more on today's meeting of the House of Representatives in Monday's newscast. An investigation into the fire at the youth hostel last Saturday that claimed the lives of three teenage girls continues. Today, the Ministry of Human Development, Social Transformation and the Poverty Alleviation announced that the investigating team has been bolstered with the addition of Florence Dillett to join Margaret Nicholas in spearheading the investigation into the fatal fire. Florence Dillett has decades of experience working with young people, both locally and internationally. She has done pioneering work in Belize with at-risk and vulnerable girls and holds a master's degree in counseling psychology. Two children who were residents of the Dorothy Menzies Child Care Center were reported missing today. 11-year-olds Jaden and Jordan August, both 11 years old, were reported missing by an employee of the Dorothy Menzies Child Care Center. The boys reportedly left for school at 8 o'clock on Thursday morning, but when the driver went to pick them up yesterday afternoon, it was discovered that they were not at school and they could not be located. Police investigations continue. A Christmas luncheon for 75 children was held today at the corporate offices of Chocator, Belize. A press release from the tour operator says that the children who attended were between the ages of 5 and 7 years old. It is a tradition that is over 10 years old, whereby guides at Chaka use the event as a means of giving back to the community they serve. The Christmas luncheon is realized through an initiative whereby from September of each year, the guides contribute a portion of the tips they received to the annual initiative. At the end of November, the company and staff match the contributions raised by the guides and in-kind contributions as well to the initiative to make this special Christmas treat possible. The National Institute of Culture and History through its Institute of Social and Cultural Research is wrapping up a four-day oral history workshop this weekend. According to our press release, the workshop sought to build the capacity of the Belize History Association membership. The workshop participants are receiving training in applying essential techniques for oral history interviews, exploring strategies of research validity and ethics, and improving skills for writing biographies. The workshop facilitator is well-known historian Dr. Adolfe Ayo, who has extensively uh, researched and published in Belize. The workshop session started at the middle of last month and will conclude tomorrow at the museum building in Belmopan when workshop participants will receive certificates of completion. The news on the national channel.
Are you always on the go? Tired of missing your favorite games while they're actually being played? Watch your games and sporting events live with Central TV and Internet's incredible My TV. Simply log on to www.mitv.bz to get easy access to 25 channels, no matter where you are. With Central TV and Internet's My TV, you're always in the game. Switching to the PureGuard line of motor oils and with good reason. PureGuard comes in different grades and specifications. It carries the API certification and comes with the Westrack stamp of approval, guaranteed to make your engine run cleaner and longer, up to 10,000 miles. With PureGuard motor oil, your engine will have less wear and tear, give you maximum performance on the road, and give your vehicle better fuel mileage. Pure Guard, good quality, affordable oil. Distributed exclusively by West Track Limited, with branches in Spanish Lookout, Belmopan, Belize City, and Orange Walk Town. The final segment of the news tonight is a look at the weather. It shows that a cool and moist northerly airflow is currently dominating our weather at the start of the weekend. The general forecast for Belize and her coastal waters is for cloudy skies tonight and tomorrow morning, along with some showers and light rain, mainly over the sea and the coast. Winds over the open sea and along the coast will be northerly to northwesterly at 10 to 20 knots with higher gusts. The sea state will be moderate, becoming rough at times. Operators of small craft are advised to exercise caution in rough seas. Low temperatures tonight will be around 72 degrees Fahrenheit along the coast, 69 degrees Fahrenheit inland, and 66 degrees Fahrenheit up in the hills. High temperatures on Saturday will range from the mid 80s along the coast to the upper 80s inland. It will be a comfortable 74 degrees Fahrenheit up at the exposed areas of the mountain Pine Ridge and along the Maya Mountains in the south. The tides. A low tide occurs tonight at 8 minutes to 12 o'clock. A high tide follows at 14 minutes past 5 o'clock in the morning. The sun will rise at 9 minutes past 6 o'clock on Saturday morning. It will set at 17 minutes past 5 o'clock tomorrow evening. The extended forecast valid through to Saturday afternoon is for a few showers and periods of light rain, mainly over coastal areas of the country. And that is a look at the weather with information provided by forecaster Derek Rudon at the Belize Weather Bureau. 
To summarize the news, here are the headlines again. Special Envoy for Women and Children delivers address on International Day of People with Disability. Home Invasion reported in Burrellboom Village and investigation of youth hostel fire a week ago continues. With the headlines, we end this edition of the 9 o'clock news. As we head out this Friday night, we hope that you and your family will have a safe and an enjoyable weekend. Join us back here at the news desk on Monday for another newscast. Thank you for joining us. I am Patrick Jones. Have a good evening and a good night.